Well hello Andrew yet again and this is episode 96 and today we're looking at the issue of prayer. So we pick the um, narrative up in Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 8 we're continuing in the Sermon on the Mount. Whenever you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Well, clearly Jesus is living in a very different time and context from the one in which we do. Standing at our street corners, loudly demonstrating our piety in prayer, carries the possibility of getting one arrested and carted off to a secure mental health unit. That's what I'd imagine could happen today. We live in a very different world from the first century highly religious one in which Jesus finds himself and to which he's speaking into. Yet there are some of the principles that remain the same. God is still God. Our need of God is no less today than it was then, even though the age in which we live believes that it is outgrowing God. And God still seeks to draw us and yearns for our company and our engagement. Hard though it might be to believe, God yearns for a relationship with us one-on-one -on -one. and I'm wanting to suggest that that's in fact what prayer is it's about it's about that relationship I love the way that um, Eugene Peterson puts this passage in the message I'm going to read it to you when you come before God don't turn that into a the theatrical production either all these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet place, secluded, so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. So, this is your father that you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. In prayer, we meet with God. And God meets with us. It's not just one way. Prayer is a conversation. It's not simply a monologue. <laughs> Although I'd have to say that I probably do most of the talking. It's where we get to listen. To listen with an expectation that we will also hear. I'm not suggesting you will hear an audible voice. Some do, but I want to suggest that this tends to be quite rare. We can, however, if we quieten our hearts, expect a response. An inward response that sounds like our voice yet isn't. That we may imagine that we are talking to ourselves, yet we aren't. It took me a while to recognise this voice, and in some of my other um, talks, you have heard me talk about that, to recognise that it did sound like me, but wasn't. Woven seamlessly into the fabric of who I am, so it doesn't come as a jarring interruption cutting across the flow of my own thinking. It is present, is gentle, and is ultimately still other. 
and is much wiser than I am. And that's the reality. This is the place where pretending is useless. The only one we can deceive is ourselves. This doesn't mean that God parades all my faults before me, all my duplicity, my self-aggrandizement, my foolishness, my mistakes, my petty grudges. He doesn't. At least not usually. From time to time, God will gently put a finger on that from which I've been hiding, always with the desire for my healing, my renewal, my growth. I was originally intending to say we and our, yet I can't speak for anyone else, even though I know my experiences are echoed by many others, so it's been I and my. Yet I can also confidently claim the we and the our. Prayer is a place for honesty, where we can be ourselves, where we can let it all hang out. God is not going to be offended by anything that we say. God knows it before we say it, and knows what's on our hearts before we do. Prayer can be a place where we discover who we really are, and what's going on for us. It's also a place where we can still hide. God lets us do that as well, knowing that the time will eventually come where we will be ready to face up to the truth about ourselves. Sometimes this can be a while. I'm amazed at my own reluctance to face what is often right in front of me. And I find myself facing that very issue right at the moment and I'm already have, I am already have a sense of knowing what it is I need to do. I have a spiritual director. He's lovely, he's wise, he's a lay Catholic person who specialises in this stuff. And I've been going to him for a good number of years. In the early years, as I was complaining about something, as I am a want to do, laying it all out there, the most common question I'd hear from him would be, and what happened, Andrew, when you brought this matter before the Lord in prayer? And every time he would be met with an embarrassed silence and then hmm, until this moment that wasn't an option that had occurred to me that I could actually or needed to actually bring it in prayer. I've been a slow learner but actually it's very useful. The Lord always has a response. If only we're willing to take the time and the humility to be present to his presence to wait and listen. My experience is that the answer to whatever the dilemma I'm facing usually comes pretty quickly. Often the first thing that comes to mind after the question is put. My response so often can be, no, no, that can't be it. And it is, so often, simple, clean, wise. What I've discovered is that the Lord is much, much smarter than I am, much more forgiving much kinder, much braver, and much more willing that I be brave than I am. Mm, don't like that bit. That is true. Gentle, loving, understanding, compassionate. And God always takes me from where I am. Not from where I might want to be, but from where I actually am, from this point now doesn't take me from where I was a week ago, or yesterday, or six years ago. It takes me from where I am right now. And simply opens up the next step. Always simply seeking to move me forward. Prayer is the place of a new beginning. Each day. Every day if we're going to be open to it. As I said, God starts where I am. Not where I was, not where I might want myself to be. God starts where I am. And I imagine it is or could be just the same for you. God bless you.